Hello, my name's Andy and welcome to the 12th episode of Keeping Water. In this episode I'm going to show the pruning and cutting back of the plants that I've just completed ready for winter. After that it will be the latest weekly update which will look at autumn food, rain in the pond and an injury to one of the fish. A lot of the plants I have, especially the irises, can be cut right back to below water level during winter. But for a couple of reasons, I don't usually do that. Firstly, because I like to not show too much of the liner. And secondly, to provide as much of a barrier to herons as I can. I had planned to wear a wetsuit when completing this work, but I went with dropping the water level and wearing waders instead. To stop having to get in and out of the pond, I used a tub and a tray floating in the pond to keep everything to hand which mostly worked when it didn't float away too far. My son gave me some help to empty the tub and fetch anything I'd forgotten. It went mostly without any problems, aside from me kicking the pipe off the pump, which was tricky to sort out due to not having the wetsuit on this time. I did eventually get the pump and pipework reconnected and all was good. First, the irises. The main aim for the irises was to cut them back quite low, remove any dying stems and other detritus that had gathered between them and in the baskets. The brown dying stems can be mostly just pulled out. Some, however, need cutting. The irises could really do with splitting, but at least for the time being, I'm leaving them as they are, as long as they remain stable and relatively neat. I'm probably going to have to do some more pruning as autumn and then winter progresses, but this will be much easier now I've cut them back this much, and I may not have to get back into the pond to do it. Moving on to the next plants. These have both grown tall and then folded down over themselves and also grown slightly sideways out of the baskets. They have provided a lot of cover for the fish and haven't looked too bad with their long green stems hanging into the water. The problems, however, with them were that not all the plant matter was green and healthy, a lot underneath were brown and dying, and also that they collected a lot of dirt and algae and uneaten food. So I ended up cutting them back a lot more than I had planned. These plants, and the next ones, were messier to cut back than the irises were, which is a little bit of a pain, as cutting them, catching the broken bits, trying to get them all in the tub, trying not to kick the pump again, and stopping the tub from floating away, meant I needed about three more hands than I had. It didn't help that having lowered the water level, the skimmer would turned off. The final section of pond plants were what formed the fish's longest lasting and favourite hiding place, and I had planned on leaving it pretty much intact. However, cutting it back a little revealed even more brown and dying plant matter and a lot of detritus and dead algae. Therefore, although not planned, I cut it all back. The fish aren't overly keen on me at the moment, having netted them and got in the pond, and cutting back their den might be the final straw. After that it was time to address the walled area. 
Most of the overhanging plants were just grass, which, while looking good in summer, were now brown and dying. They were also overgrown the other plants, the ones I'd actually decided to plant there, so it was time for them to go. I pulled them and cut them all out, as well as some other weeds. I'm left with a pond that appears larger, with more clear surface water. Try as I might, some plant matter remained in the pond. However, filling the pond back up and turning the skimmer back on helped catch a lot of that. The pond looks more open and the plants look more in proportion, something I've always preferred to be honest and why I usually regularly prune them back. I don't like that the fish have lost their hiding places and worry a little bit about herons. I also worry that I've removed their natural spawning area, but as they've not shown any signs of doing that, that's really only a minor concern. I think with the plants cut back with less plant matter in the water, it's easier to keep the pond clear and clean. Less surface detritus especially will collect there instead of moving round to the skimmer as it should. To help with herons, I've added some more support posts to the net fence. Obviously, short of a roof on top of the pond, there's not much that is 100% heron proof, but I think the fence close to the edge makes it, at least, more difficult for them. Clearing the plants has given me a different idea about adding lilies to the pond, as they will clearly fit really nicely in the top left corner. They, they will still only provide seasonal cover, but are healthier and more pleasing on the eye than overgrown plants. Tomorrow, I'm going to get back into the pond, this time to use the large net and the skimmer net to clear as much of the algae and detritus from the bottom of the pond as I can. As recent in-pond videos have shown, what was a light natural looking covering has grown a little too much for my liking. I may include some videos from that in next week's episode. We've had a lot of rain in our part of the UK this last week and again I had to pump more water out to waste. It also prevented too much videoing in the pond, although I did get two sessions done, one filming directly above the fish and the other filming from one of the regular positions on the pond floor. It was when filming from the second position that, as well as noticing that the bottom of the pond was looking mucky, I can't get a vacuum soon enough, that I also noticed an injury to the mirror carp. Both of the larger fish had some marks from the netting I did a couple of weeks ago, mainly small white marks above their mouths where they had swam into the sides of the plastic tub that I had measured them in. The mirror, however, also has what looks like a white abrasion to the side of its head. I think it may have injured itself when I filmed the last session with the selfie stick, as I dropped it in when setting things up, and the mirror did spook off in the direction of the pump. Anyway, it doesn't look like anything worse than a scrape and I'm loath to net it out again so soon after already doing so and on top of the added stress of me getting in the pond. My plan therefore is to cut back feeding a little just to be sure all's well with the water quality and keep an eye on the mirror via the GoPro. If things start to look worse or something different to a scrape then it'll be worth get netting the fish and thinking about treatment. Behaviour wise the mirror is its usual self. I'll update next week. Talking of food, I've changed the regular food I provide the fish with to a sinking pellet mix of protein and wheat germ pellets. They've appeared to have had no issues with this change in diet and feed on it as soon as I've thrown it in. In fact, much more confidently with me there than with surface food. My aim in giving a mixture is to get them used to the wheat germ prior to having to give it on its own once temperatures drop more regularly below 10 degrees. So far they've remained at about 12 degrees or so for the past week. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Keeping Water. Please give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it, add a comment or question if you have them and subscribe if you'd like to see more. In next week's episode, I'm going to complete the pre-winter preparation by giving the pump a clean and removing as much detritus from the bottom of the pond as I can. 
there will also be the usual weekly update. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.